Ladies and gentlemen, you're now tuned into Chat City with P. Ross. Conversations and interviews are in the queue. Listen or join in. Here she is, P. Ross. Greetings, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in again to Chat City with P. Ross. I am your host, P. Ross. I am back at the Oak Tree. I am glad to be back here this February 1st. I've been away for a while. And I tell you, it always feels good to sit here in this spot in this seat and talk to you. Thank you for joining in. I have her here as promised. She's in the building today, y'all. Let's give it up for the one and the only <laughs> host of Brown Sugar Radio, comedian, actress, Janine Slaughter. How are you doing, Miss Janine? Hey, what's <laughs> up? It's a pleasure to be here. Hey, glad to have you here. We also have Margaret Owens, Margaret Ann Owens, comedian, also in the house. She's been here with us before. Hey, Thank you for being back, Margaret. Margaret, can you hear me, Margaret? I can hear you. Okay. I'm hearing other stuff. Okay. All right. So uh, it is, like I said, the first day of February. It's also Black History Month. Uh, and this is a time where we take time to stop and think about and highlight and hand clap and feature all of those that have contributed to this country and uh, the world beyond Black History Month. Uh, it's something very special. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, I just want to encourage everybody today, especially black Americans, black folks here in the U.S. I just want to encourage you to know your history, know your black history, know the truth, the, the good side and the bad side to it. OK, uh, just really know, because there are some myths out there and just try to figure out what the myths are and what the truths are, because there are things I'm still learning <laughs> at this day and age that, you know, I'm. Uh, it's just amazing and fascinating and shocking at the same time so just make sure you just take time to stop know your history teach it to the younger folks um leave entertainment out of the church i want to um uh encourage our churches to do that today because we're being laughed at i'm just going to say that we're being laughed yeah. at and making mockery of and this at this day and time that's it's not needed so let's just regroup that's what i'm asking our churches to do um build whole families again you know, just just concentrate on that. I think whole families are so much better. There's not nothing wrong. I mean, I'm I'm a single person and, you know, I live singly, but just just concentrate on the whole family once again and. Um, continue to grow your generational wealth, you know, don't give away or don't sell what grandma and grandpa left for you. If you can just do something with that. Right. Yeah, revive it or do something with that okay even just just don't give it away or let anybody else have it okay those are just my little tips for black history month all right moving right along moving right along i just also want to say this too uh what this show is about chat city with p ross um we're about spotlighting people no matter what walks of life they're from um and we are we are also about given the good as well as the bad. And we try to grow and learn from the bad. So if you hear bad, it's n we're not trying to do anything to hurt anyone. It's to learn and grow, understand what it is, you know, and, right. and, and hopefully turn that thing around to something positive, okay? So that's what we're about here. But enough of that, too. We're going to get into Miss Janine Slaughter here, hey. <laughs> our special invited guest. And let me tell you how I met this young lady. I don't know if she's going to remember all this story, but it was right here at Oak 93.5 when I first met her. And this was about three years ago. I was coming from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Uh, I had just closed a little business deal there. And it was a rainy, dreary day. Now, after I closed my business deal, I was supposed to stay and meet some friends, uh, an old friend. Um, and he wanted me to meet his new friend or whatever. That was supposed to happen. But it was raining so hard and I had such a long day. I was like, no, I need to get back home. So I canceled that visitation and headed back towards um, the Moore County area. And as I was coming along, the rain started to dry up. All right. So then I called a mutual friend, um, Aaliyah Ford at the time who had a show here. And I said, Hey, Aaliyah, can I just come, uh, sit at the station with you today? And she said, sure, come on down. So I did, I, I you know, just took that beeline on into Raleigh and <laughs> I sat right, right where Margaret is now. First time on radio. 
Yep. And Janine Slaughter was right right about where she is now. And Dink Kearney was here as well. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, man, I I was... I was having such a ball with, with them that day. And that Janine's spirit was just, uh, it was just so lively and fun mm-hmm. to be near. I remember <laughs> I <was> like, that. <laughs> yep, we had and, yeah. And so um, from there, the next time I saw her was at the hog pen. Yep. At the hog pen. At the hog pen at a comedy show. Um, comedian Mr. James was there. Mm-hmm. I think he's go- he goes by a different name now. I'm um, not sure. Um, Mo. Uh, mm. Mo. Something. Mo something. Okay. All right. Um, Mojo. Or something. Mojo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah, he goes by that now. Um, Margaret Ann Owens was there, but I didn't know Margaret at that time. She <laughs> probably don't know. I was. I had to go back and look at this <laughs> when, <laughs> before I came here today. So Margaret Ann Owens was there at that same event, and Dink Kearney was there. Um, there was a singer there. Um, rapper. Uh, what was, was his there name? A rapper there? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I didn't realize who he was till after the fact. When everybody started taking pictures, he had, uh, he had dancers with him. No, no, not that. Um, Petey mm. Pablo. Petey Pablo Petey was in the Pablo house that there? night. Okay. Yeah. Uh huh. Petey Pablo was there. So Mr. Shanier was there. I remember Mr. Shanier was yeah. there. I didn't yeah. Remember. This is when. I, Petey Pablo. Okay. Petey Pablo was Look, in the house Cameron, that night. Up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Petey Pablo. Woo-hoo. Hope you're listening tonight today. Okay. Yeah. And so Janine was on the stage. That was the first time I was able to experience her as a comedian. And oh. I'm telling you, you had me laughing. Thank you had you. me rolling. And let me tell you, you took all the nervousness away from me that night because <laughs> I was sitting in the front row. Okay. Right? And I was afraid, Mr. James, he was paying in that front row. And you know what you guys do. Mm-hmm. Y'all like to get people that's on the front <laughs> row, right? <laughs> yeah. no, I don't. That's uh, not my style. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, he looked like he was, well, he did. He got the couple that was next to me. Mm-hmm. But then you came on stage and, man, you had me balling. You had me balling. Thank you. So, uh, yeah. Um, let's start there. Janine, I think somewhere along the lines, I heard something like you said, getting or taking a class. I did. I took a class. I got started in comedy um, at Good Nights Comedy Good Club in okay. Raleigh. I, um, I've i always been told I'm funny my whole life. Like uh-huh. if there's one thing that I've that's been consistently told to me my whole life is that you're so funny. But I, just being transparent. I've always kind of struggled with that low self-esteem thing, that kind of uh-huh. like fear. Uh-huh. I've let fear stop me from doing so much. Um, so I took a bet. My cousin bet me. She, you know, I was like, listen, uh-huh. I'm tired <laughs> of you harassing me about this comedy thing. Uh-huh. Uh, but I'm I'm also very one of those people that I'm very um, like analytical. Uh-huh. So I was like, before I do this, and I have been like booked on two open mics and I, I choked both times. Oh, wow. <laughs> So I said, before I do this, I got to take a class. Like, I got to know what I'm doing before I get up here and make a total fool out myself. Uh-huh. And my thought process was, I'm going to do this, I'm going to take the class, and I'm going to show her that this really is not my calling. This uh-huh. really is not what I'm supposed to be doing. But um, it actually, um, was the joke was on me, I guess, because, <laughs> it, yeah, it took off. Yes, ma'am, and you are doing wonderful, I'm telling you. Yeah. Um so when you said people said that you were funny or you've been funny your whole life, uh, was time. that at home with around family or was that like in school? In school, it, it, like I could be on the phone, like uh-huh. calling somebody for customer service and uh-huh. people would be like, <laughs> I mean, it did not matter what my daughter tells me all the time. She says, mommy, the thing about you is you be serious sometime and you be so funny. And <laughs> it makes me angry sometimes because a lot of times I be so serious about stuff and people uh-huh. think I'm joking. Um, but I just doesn't matter where I've been. People will always say, God, you're so funny. Now, does that run in your family? Like, do you get it from mom or do you get it from dad or you get it from both? Both. My parents are the funniest people. <laughs> I, my mom and my dad. My dad passed in 2006. But Sorry my, to hear yeah, that. my mom and my dad are they are so they are just hilarious people. It's in your genes. You can't help it. <laughs> like they are just unintentionally like everything, like, you know, that parenting funny, like everything you say, they got to make a joke out of it. Uh-huh. You know, that kind of funny. Do you have siblings? I do. I have. Oh my God. My father was 
definitely a Rolling Stone. My father's seven Rolling children Stone. by okay. six, six different women. Okay. So, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a lot of us. And my mother has, it was four of us. So, okay. Wow. Yeah, big family. Got, big family. But we're all very tight knit. Very tight knit. That's, That's awesome. Yeah. So, I give my daddy that. Okay. <laughs> we're going to give hand clap to. Give daddy a hand clap mama. to Pop. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. So, um, big family. A lot of siblings. Janine, does any of those siblings have that? Laffy Jean trait that you, you my got. whole family, the whole family, they are oh, funny. Right. <laughs> like my whole family is like even on social media, my little cousins and some of the stuff they post, I'd be like, man, these people are funny. <laughs> they are really hilarious. Uh huh. Uh, my baby sister sometimes, um, she helps me write some of my stuff. I call her and I'll run some of my stuff past her because she's she's just funny. You uh-huh. know, even my sister Jocelyn who does Brown Sugar Radio with us. She, mm-hmm. She is funny. Oh, so that's your sister. That's my sister. Wow, yeah. I didn't know that. Uh huh. She's okay. funny too. So yeah, my family. I just come from a very funny family. All right. Now, growing up, I don't know how old you are. Do you mind sharing your age? No, I will be fifty-two in April. All right, girl. Yeah, fifty-two yeah. in April yeah. coming up. Yeah. So back in uh, so I'm fifty-four, pushing fifty-five. So back in our era, growing up, seventies. late 60s 70s okay um who did you watch on tv that you found funny comical i mean there was sanford and son and all those shows but what what was your favorite who were some of your favorites you know what because i'm not like a comedy head like Mm -hmm. you know i'm saying this was not i always say comedy chose me i didn't choose comedy Uh like i talked to people and they be like following on i'm like i'm not i love laverne and shirley happy days yes you know those kind of shows that Uh was my my stuff i i I was a sitcom you know what i'm saying um what was the one oh god where he was the his name was was it Schneider? He was the mechanic. Yeah. I mean he was the apartment one day the at maintenance a time. one day at a time. One was, day at a time. Oh, oh God. yeah. That, that was good. good. Uh-huh. I like that kind of stuff. <laughs> to lie, you right. know? Yeah. Um, yeah, different strokes. Um, yes. But I didn't have any like comedians that I actually followed. You okay. know, like when I talk to other comedians, they can like pop off all these different comedians. And uh-huh. I'm like, no, not so much. So no Carol Burnett. No, you know what? No, no? I wow. I used to watch uh-huh. the Carol Burnett show sometimes at uh-huh. night, uh-huh. but like I can't say that I, I was such a fan of comedy um, that I followed her or like how people, a lot of comedians I know, like they can name all these deaf comedy jam uh-huh. comedians and they can quote. All, I'm like, no. Well, that was going to be my other question to you. One of my questions to you um, coming up. Okay. So 70s, we slid out of the 70s, 80s, we're more like teenagers. And uh, I don't know if you went beyond high school or not but um for me and when i started going to college we were uh, we had uh in living color and we had mm-hmm. um we had uh deaf comedy jam and comic view yeah and and, see i watched those shows just to be entertained i didn't uh-huh. watch those shows because oh i want to be a stand-up comedian i just watched them to be entertained i used to sneak my sister and i we would sneak and watch george carlin at night uh-huh. just because of the cussing you know what i'm saying <laughs> we would sneak you know because we thought it was funny uh-huh. um you know but none of it i never watched any of this with the vision that i would want not that i used to think when i was a little girl i would want to be an actress mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. but never ever in my wildest dreams stand-up comedian was never on my roster and you said the cousin is the one that kind of pushed you up to it right one she, of your yeah she, i got sick of her harassing me about <laughs> it so i just was like you know what i'm gonna just take the class and uh-huh. and you know and actually a, another really good friend of mine um he would always he was dating my niece at the time and he used to call me miss nini he would always tell me miss nini i promise you so funny miss <laughs> nini you gotta do this you gotta do it so uh-huh. you know i guess god places people in your life to push you to um where you need to go. And then I ended up getting divorced. Mm -hmm. And then I had a really good friend of mine um, was driving home from work and he had a heart attack behind the wheel of the car. And um, after that happened, I kind of was like, okay, you know what, what if these people are right? And I was like, I I don't want to die or get old 70, 80 and be full of shoulda, wouldas and Uh couldas or always like, what if I had a, so so let me just, let me just see what's going to happen. Yeah. And I still struggle with my confidence in comedy, even though most people don't believe it. I still struggle with it. Mm. Um, I think that's a good thing, though. Is not it? necessarily the word struggle, but if you ever get to the point like, oh, I know I got this, that's when you mess up because it's like you got the pride. Um, a lot of times people say, like, um, if you tell somebody you're nervous every time you go on stage, that's a good thing because if you ever feel like, oh, I got this, 
then that's what that's when you mess up. You, you mess should up. have some type of, you know, bubble guts. Yeah, but, but no, <laughs> it don't show to the it don't show to the audience, but you know yourself. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, then, then I'm doing good then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember that very first time you you got on the mic as a comedian? I do. I was actually reneged. I, I thought it was uh, at the end of the class. I, I took my class, uh-huh. the graduation showcase, and I remember telling Matt White. I remember saying, um, "Thank you for everything you've done, and I appreciate you, but I, I'm not. I'm gonna go ahead and go home. I'm not gonna. I'm not going up there. Uh, I just could. I, it was the room was packed. Wow. And I was like, I just, I can't do this. What was his response? He, gra- I never forget. He grabbed me and he hugged me and he said he pulled me really close and he said, "That's nice." He said, "But you gonna get your ass up on the stage." <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, all right, Matt White, thank you. Yeah, he said that you gonna get up there, uh-huh. and I still have the video and everything, and um, and I did, and I got like it was a great response, yeah. but I'm gonna tell you when you. You have to be, you got to have some confidence. You, you, that's, that's a tough thing to do getting up there. Mm-hmm. And when you already have low self-esteem and low self-worth and always worrying about what people think and what people see, and you don't see the beauty or the value in yourself. Now you want me to stand up in front of a room <laughs> full of people and let them work me over the coals. Uh-huh. Like, come on, you got to be crazy. Now on that first day, day uh, that you did that or night, I don't know what time of day it, it was. was night. Nighttime. Okay. After the you got the applause from the crowd, what was your feeling or what was your thoughts? I was like, okay. But I'm going to tell you, this really, it has really been more of a God thing for me. It, it really has. It has been more of a, okay. Because somebody asked me the other day, they said, well, why do you keep doing this? And I said, because I told God at the beginning of this journey, okay, Lord, I don't know. But if you say go, I'm going to go. If mm-hmm. you tell me to get out there, I'm going to do it regardless of my fear regardless of how i feel about me regardless of what if you say go i'm gonna go and you've been going ever since (laughs) (laughs) okay if you're just tuning in you're listening to chat city with p ross i am your host p ross i have with me in the building today comedian actress radio show host that's right Janine Slaughter and comedian actress Margaret Ann Owens. We are spotlighting Janine today. Hey, she is my very, very, very special guest in here. All right, and we've been talking about her start in comedy. Yeah, start in comedy. All right, so let's see. You took the class. Mr. White made you get up there. Mm-hmm. You found that you could make. Well, you already knew that you could make people laugh. I knew uh, I could make. Well, you know, I knew was, I could make mm-hmm. people laugh in mm-hmm. casual conversation. Mm-hmm. I didn't know. I like. I always tell people I think mm-hmm. you should take the class because I didn't know behind stand up comedy when you see people. I didn't know all of the. Okay, there's such thing as a premise, a setup, and a punchline. There's a mm-hmm. such thing as transition. There's timing. There's all these different factors that play into actually being a stand-up comic so it was very beneficial for it you to be do that extremely beneficial and you recommend that others should try it as well yeah because yeah. you i remember um in class um telling matt um one of my jokes i talk about because my ex-husband struck um he dealt he had drug you know when a, i was married addiction was you know part of the um his struggle and i has telling Matt you know I got some jokes I want but I said I don't know you know I don't know if I want to get up here and I remember him saying that's you know part of your healing is being able to find the funny and what you've gone through Mm -hmm. and I think taking the class and learning how to take that premise and and write from it and find the punchline rather than just getting up there talking about it Mm -hmm. um, learning structure in comedy you know that helped me a lot um, and, and taking the class, did show me how to find the, the funny versus me trying to do it on my own, not knowing what I was doing. Have you ever bombed, Janine? Oh, yes. Yeah. Tell us about that. Oh, my God. I'll never forget um, when I first started. That's why they say you need to have more than, you know, you need to have some jokes in your inventory in your arsenal. Uh-huh. I was um, I was invited to Wake Forest. It was an extremely conservative crowd. Uh-huh. Trump 
kind of conservative crowd. Uh-huh. And I'm new comic. You know, most of my jokes were nasty and, you know, kind of <laughs> raunchy. And, uh-huh. But that was all I had. Uh-huh. I had that, that hot five and it was hot. <laughs> and uh, I was like, I already knew. I was like, this is not going to go well. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, they were just looking at me. It was, I'll never forget when it was over, one lady came up to me. She said, listen, you were hilarious to me. Uh-huh. She said, I know that was rough. She said, but I thought it was funny. I uh-huh. said, well, the other 60 people in there did not. <laughs> <laughs> that was brutal. Um, and, you know, I've bombed a few times. It's a long ride home. But what I've learned about bombing is um, it's part of the journey. Mm-hmm. It, you have to bomb, mm-hmm. but you don't internalize it. At one point, I would internalize it. Mm-hmm. Three weeks later, I'm still, you know, re- playing it back over in my head and um, but I learned it's it's part of the journey. You got to be able to fail to to succeed. If you you can't expect to you know knock it out the park every time. Mm-hmm. And everybody's everybody. What, how am I saying it? Every audience isn't your audience. Isn't your like audience th- those or let's say you do the raunchy, but you in front of a church crowd or you might be in front of a church crowd and they think you're hilarious. Mm-hmm. But um, I wouldn't take it personal. Yeah, it's, it's a it's a growing experience. But yeah. So do you accept an invitation if uh, or how do you determine what is your audience and if you choose to perform? How do you figure that part out? For instance, um, did you know that you were going before a conservative crowd before you got there? No. Okay. New comedian. Now I know. But at that point, I was just like, hey, anybody ask me to come, I'm coming. Uh But now, you know, now that I've grown and I've learned some things. I know one of the things I ask, that's one of the first questions I ask. Okay. Okay. What kind of crowd is this? Uh Um, is this a young crowd? Because a lot of times I found with younger crowds, um, because my comedy is from my life. I speak from my, I don't make up jokes. I speak from my life experience. Uh Um, so a lot of times younger crowds, they can't relate to my life experience. They don't know nothing about divorce and raising kids. They don't, they don't think that's funny. So I know that if I'm going to have a younger crowd, I've got to speak to their life experience, mm-hmm. what they know about sex, smoking weed, student loans. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, you right. You have to speak to what they know about. Um, uh-huh. Megan Thee Stallion. You know, you have right. to, that's, um, and then I found if I, I know if I got an older crowd, okay, now I got to tone down. Not so much sex, not so much raunchy. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Maybe some grandma jokes. Um, <laughs> I found I'm learning my crowd. I know uh-huh. if I have a, uh, 40 to 50 or 30 that professional black women they like sex but they don't like vulgar Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. i i scream my crowd now before i decide if i'm gonna take the gig um the other day i was invited like i said to the improv to come and do they say okay 20 minutes clean i'm thinking okay i'm gonna go knock it out i get there's 400 people (laughs) nerds like nerds okay Okay. caucasian like Uh i'm like what this is about to go one of two ways because uh-huh. this is not my crowd talk about computers yeah but it was my crowd okay you know what i'm saying it was my crowd so i guess you just have to you have to gauge your material you have to um yeah i guess you just have to you know you have to think from the other side you're saying something very important you've learned how to i guess diversify and be versatile and yeah and, and that that to me shows uh growth in 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 what you do in your craft you know yeah. or or you know you you've perfected it to where you can well, handle I'm trying anything to get there. trying yeah. to get there i try to what i try to do is think from the perspective okay if i was that person uh-huh. what would i find funny or from what I know about this particular group of people, uh-huh. what kind of stuff do they laugh at? You know? Right. Um, I have some jokes I do about a uh, guy in prison and, and dating, you know, and somebody said, did you do the prison bit? I said, I sure <laughs> did not because I knew goodness well those people weren't going to know nothing about no man in prison. Uh-huh. <laughs> they weren't going to connect Listen with that. To daddy or mama. Yeah. <laughs> they weren't going to get it. So I said, no, I didn't do that. Uh-huh. I did the bit about my dog. Okay. It's yeah. hilarious. Yeah, they yeah. thought that was hilarious. Yeah, it's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I think I heard that one too yeah. on stage when we were at the Hog Fair. Yeah, that that. yeah. Oh, they thought that was funny. <laughs> they thought that was the funniest thing ever. Do you have a support team, Janine? I, you know, and it's very, it keep it small, a really small circle. Mm-hmm. Um, and that works for me. Um, because for some reason, comedy is so, it can get competitive. It can get, it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just keep my circle small. Okay. And, and that works. Um, how effective is open mic for comedians? Mega, I think. 
I think that you never outgrow open mics. I hear a lot of seasoned comedians say they don't go to open mics anymore. When you get to a certain level, what's the point of going? But I think that you should always be going to open mics. I think that um, I don't go as much as I should mm-hmm. um, because, and I've noticed a difference. You you need to be going. I never forget an, another comedian told me he said you you got the stage presence. He said you've got the material. You've got it. He said, but you don't say your material enough. Mm-hmm. And when you go to those open mics and you're constantly going, that's one thing I will say. When I first met Kimberly Denise, mm-hmm. Kim stayed at those open mics, and I noticed that about her when she was on stage she had her stuff just flow because she was saying it so much because she stayed at the open mics. Uh It's crucial. Wow. It really is. Margaret, what's open mic been like for you? Um, Well, I found a spot that I thought was pretty neat. That's in Raleigh. Uh, Which one? It's the juice box. It's kind of new. Uh, She does different other stuff there too, but it's open mic on Thursdays. Um, But it has a variety of different, I mean, it's not just comedy, mm-hmm. but I feel like going to open mic will allow you to um, try new material. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you've got a big family, you can try it on them, but, you know, you got some people, like, ah, you crazy, and people think that's saying you're funny because th- that particular person is laughing at you, but you try it on people that don't even know you and see if they laugh, and also to encourage other people that may be there just starting out with comedy, um, if they see you there and you're maybe a step or two ahead of them, you can kind of encourage them while you're there. Mm-hmm. But um, I think, uh, open mic is a crucial part of um, staying um, current on your yeah. comedy. Skills. You get booked at open mics too, because you never know who's there. Mm-hmm. I've got a lot of bookings at open mics, because a lot of times people are there looking for funny people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you're just tuning in, you're listening to Chat City with P. Ross on Oak ninety three point five FM W R L Y Raleigh. I have in the studio with me today a very special guest, Miss Janine Slaughter. Hey. She is a comedian, actress. And radio show host. And we also have Margaret Ann Owens, who is a comedian actress as well. All right. So, Janine, you I, I've just mentioned uh, you have a radio show. Yeah. Now, um, I remember watching you on Friday nights here at Oak 93.5. Mm-hmm. During the pandemic. You were with... Um, all Eyes on Me DJ. Shout out to the All Eyes on Me DJ, <laughs> DJ's crew. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And man, I used to watch you guys faithfully in here. I mean, you guys mm-hmm. would be rocking. I think it was DJ Butter. Yeah, DJ on, Butter. On there. Shout out to <laughs> DJ Butter. And there was you, and there was maybe one other young lady in here. We well, you would rotate. switch up. We yeah, okay, rotate, you would yeah. rotate. Mm-hmm. And, uh, man, you guys had Friday nights rocking in here. Because, yeah. like I said, I used to listen all the time. Mm-hmm. And you were pretty much leading the ship. You were acting as host. Am I correct That's on right. that? Okay, yeah. tell us how you got into all of that. Well, I met... When did I meet? I met K Boom, DJ K Boom, who's the president of All Eyes on Me DJs. I don't even I think I met him at a comedy show. Shout uh, out to K Boom. Yeah. <laughs> and um, when the pandemic came, um, you know, everybody was in the house. Nobody could get out. Nobody could go anywhere. So um, K Boom, you know, wanted, wanting the DJs to kind of, you know, be able to have an opportunity to DJ and then still be able to bring something to people. Mm-hmm. So um, he was like, well, you know what? Let's do a lady show on friday night he said i think you and butter could do something on friday night where she kind of you know plays at first he wanted me to come do comedy i'm like no i'm not doing comedy (laughs) um i'm not gonna come and tell jokes while she plays music in the background Uh but um i can come and uh, host and kind of like you know we can have our own little in-studio party Uh um and it it was a it worked people loved it because like i said people were stuck in the house nobody could get out in clubs so people you know we had people who would get their drinks and they would you know right in their own house they would party with us uh-huh. um every friday night yeah mm-hmm. do you miss that doing that i do i do miss it but then once everything opened back up so butter's booking started back mine started <laughs> back so it's like okay wait a minute now we missing money so it's like okay wait yeah a yeah you got to do a reunion though or yeah, something because i'm telling you you guys were really doing it in here you yeah you ladies were really pumping it up and like i said you had me going through, through the, during the pandemic it's something really by did. the woman's touch <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so now here's my next question. You doing that on Friday nights, did that help you or lead you into uh, Brown Sugar Radio? Actually, you know what? I've always kind of wanted to do my own radio. Like, that's my dream. Like, when people always talk about, like, 
acting and and movies and 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 all of that other stuff um shout out to ty banks who just watching who actually gave me my first opportunity to do some professional acting so to speak um that that's my like ultimate dream is to have my own radio show syndicated like or like my own tv talk show Mm -hmm. um but i had was on the radio with hl um who had his morning show here hl boney shout out to him yeah and then um (laughs) i always wanted to do i wanted to do a podcast because my heart my passion is women's empowerment like that's the thing that you know that's just the thing that lights my fire women's empowerment so when i was telling kim we were talking about doing a podcast initially um Mm -hmm. and then kim was like well what about a radio show what about seeing if we could do something at the radio station Mm -hmm. um and so that's kind of how we ended up with brown sugar radio here at the radio station awesome awesome i haven't been following lately just because i've just been so busy you know and uh but i know it's good and it's so good that you guys are now Oh, an award-winning, award-winning radio show yes. man let me tell you when i saw that you guys were nominated for it and you got the win in that 2023 yeah tell us about that janine that was crazy so we didn't even like we 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 submitted um well somebody that we know submitted us right so i'm mm-hmm. thinking okay we probably won't you know we probably won't get it but it's nice to just you know still be you know, consider. Um, but then when we got the email saying, okay, you know, we screened out all these people and you guys were selected uh, to move forward as nominees. We were like, okay, all right. Mm-hmm. Um, so then it was like me and my sister, we were like, okay, well, cause Kim was on tour with the place she's a part of. I was like, well, we'll still go, you know, we'll get, go to Arkansas, you know, it's a little trip, you know, we'll meet some new people and network. Um, and then when we got there, um, you know, once you, you know, you kind of get around everybody and everybody kind of knew each other. I was like, ah, oh, no way. We ain't, we ain't going to win this thing. <laughs> so when they called the, like the, you know, they called the, I think they called the radio host of the year. And uh, they were like, you know, we radio host of the year. And they were like with 18,000 votes. So I'm just wow. sitting here. I'm like, well, no, that ain't me. <laughs> and when they said Janine Slaughter, I was like, Janine Slaughter. Yes, ma'am, Janine like, Slaughter. <laughs> yeah, so um, that was that was dope. It was really dope. It was dope to go was to network and to um, meet all those new people, um, and you know, just to win the the war to get the exposure out there for Brown Sugar Radio in a whole different demographic. Um, it was encouraging. It was just nice, you know, to put on our dress and walk the red carpet. Yes. And, um, I always tell my sister, you know, I don't, I don't, I feel like God doesn't, um, he doesn't expose you to anything unless he plans to take you to the next level. You know, right. it's kind of yeah. like he gives you a little t- snippet, little breadcrumbs of what's to come, you know, uh-huh. before he gives you the whole loaf. So that was dope. Well, here's a little sidebar here. Surprisingly, I too was recently nominated. I voted for you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I <laughs> but I, re- I was recently nominated. Uh-huh. And like you, I was surprised too. Um, that somebody would put my name in a hat. You know, I, I almost missed that phone call I, I, or um, message on my um, on my answering service. I was like, uh, huh? You know, uh, somebody's nominated you from your community for this award. And I was like, wow. oh, for real? I thought it was a joke at first. And, you know, but Chat City with P. Ross is on the roster for that. that. And so up. I hope we, hope we take, hope get take it. it home. But if not, you, again, it's just nice to be thought of to in that way of for a community thing. service award. I tell people, do not despise small beginnings at Amen. all. You know, don't take anything for granted. Don't despise small beginnings because you never know. Um, you just never know what where it's, where it's going to go. Yeah. Now, you've worked with some A-listers and yeah, the, uh, from the big screen i'm gonna tell you something when i saw that uh you were with uh or you got the chance to work with orlando jones girl oh. you, let me tell you <laughs> i came in here when i knew you were bringing him to the station i saw it you know uh-huh. on social media right i was like man i gotta see that show i gotta see that show somehow i missed it okay but it was like maybe a day or two later, I don't know, some time later, it mm-hmm. was my turn to come on to the show. And I think one of the first things I did when I stepped in here, I asked Steven, I was like, hey, was Orlando Jones really in here? Because let me <laughs> tell you something. He is one of my favorite actors and only because of one movie. And that was Drumline. Drumline. That is Drumline. I mean, okay. I'm like, oh, okay, Orlando Jones, he's yes. going to be here at the Oak Tree. Oak 93.5. Uh-huh. 
But tell me, uh, Janine, how did you get into getting on the stage with Orlando Jones and Pierre and uh, Coco Brown, who you're going to be with tomorrow night? Is that right? Yeah, actually, okay. I'm, I'm not on the show tomorrow. I'm just going okay. to support. Um, okay. But actually, open mic. Open, open mic. mic. Like I said, when I first started this journey, that's why I tell people, don't take any opportunity for granted. Mm -hmm. uh, when I first started doing comedy, I would go, 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 go. And I remember my godmother and people in my family would be like, man, you going this far to do five minutes or you going here to do this or mm -hmm. you going here. They not even paying you. Um, but when you for, you can't take any opportunity for granted, even at this stage, I still don't take any opportunity for granted because you just never know what God is going to do or what door is going to open for you. Mm -hmm. Um, I drove all the way to Wilmington, North Carolina to do five minutes on an open mic. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how I met Orlando was the host. Wow. Um, a friend of mine called me and she's like, you know, um, this, you know, I know somebody who's doing an open mic and you should go and, you know, and I'm like, okay, I'll go whatever. And, um, I just went, you know, and when I went, I did the mic and it was cool. And the lady that was putting it together, Karen, at the time, she was like, oh, you, you know, you're funny. You know, she was like, I'm going to work with you. I'm like, OK. And um, I left and I didn't hear from her till like a year later. Mm -hmm. Never knew that that whole year that she was watching my grind on social media. Wow. Never wow. knew. And then like a year later, she hit me up and said, you know, I'm. Um, you know, I've been watching you, you know, and I, I want to book you for something. A lot of bookings I've got is going to support other people. Mm -hmm. Um, I think people, a lot of it is networking. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of it is, at least for me, a lot of doors have opened for me just through networking. Mm -hmm. Pierre, all in networking. Mm -hmm. Um, Faison, networking. All of the, you know what I'm saying? Most of the big people that I've worked with networking. Mark Curry, Mm -hmm. I just went and was kind and nice. And, you know, I always tell people too, attitude determines altitude. That's Man. right. Yeah. You know, a lot say of that, people, Say that again. Attitude <laughs> determines altitude. You know? Yeah. Really. It really does. It's been networking and, and attitude. A lot of people have booked me. People have done things for me. Because they be like, you just, you're a cool person. You, you know what I'm saying? Right. Real talk. Yeah, and that, you truly are. Like I said, real. that day we were sitting over there, mm -hmm. what, three years ago, I was sitting next to you, and it was like, wow, she's really cool, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. If you're just tuning in, you're listening to Chat City with P. Ross on Oak 93.5 FM WRLY Raleigh. <laughs> I have comedian and actress Margaret Ann Owens in the building and the very talented hey. Janine Slaughter. Janine, you were recently married. Yeah. You mentioned divorce, but you're married again. Congratulations. Oh, Congratulations. Thank you. Don't clap too much. <laughs> Tell us about Mr. Middleton. Is that correct? No, actually, Middleton is my first husband. Oh, I'm sorry. What? <laughs> Mr. I'm sorry. Oh, but that's okay. No, don't. Hey, listen. It's all good. Um, you know what? Because I'm going to tell you something. What I, I This is this is just me. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like marriage the legal piece of it, I I just, it sucks to me. Um, I, before I married my, <laughs> just this last time, really, I said I never would get married again because I feel like I, the book's confusing to me. I feel like when we say, okay, we, if marriage is vows that we take before God, then why does the government have to get involved? Mm -hmm. When I got my divorce the last time, like, I'm like, this man and raked me over the coals mm -hmm. and I got to wait a whole year and then get permission from the government to be done with him. Uh -huh. Like they got to give me the okay <laughs> to be done with this man who then straight dogged me. Uh -huh. Um, So I was like, you know what? I, I'm really never going to get married again. Um, At least the legal piece of it. And uh -huh. I didn't really want to do that legal part again. Cause I really just don't, I don't get that legal part. I think it's all a money racket. If you and if we take vows, if we go into church or wherever we go and we commit to each other before God, that's enough for me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's other legal documents we can do in terms of our 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 money and our property and stuff without the government getting involved. That way, if it go left to the left to the left, I don't got to wait for somebody else to tell me it's OK for you to, to disconnect from this. Mm -hmm. um, can I give you a bit of information? Hopefully you won't get divorced again, but I found out within the last 
four years, I think it was, that let's say that you want a divorce, but both of you were in agreement to get in a divorce. He can stand outside the courthouse while you go in and file your papers. They come outside, give him the papers, and you get your divorce right then. Well, when I got my first divorce, I'm going to tell you, my appointment was at 2.30. By 2, 3 o'clock, I was in the car with the papers. <laughs> and this show you just, how I was like, they don't really even value marriage because once I got the paper, the judge hit the thing and was like, enjoy your newfound freedom. Wow. I'm like, I lost my husband, my kids, and lost their father. What are you talking about? Enjoy yeah. my newfound freedom. You know, there's no no value on, on marriage whatsoever. But, yeah, this time around, I told him, listen, you locked in, bro. This, this, is, <laughs> this is, you know, this is, you stuck. But, no, Collins is my, my, um, my Slaughter is actually my, my maiden name. It's uh -huh. my my legal name La people always think it's not no no laughter with the s slaughter that is my legal born government right. name so i know that this must be my calling You're predestined already <laughs> yes uh-huh yeah. um collins is my collins uh, yeah collins i apologize i got that wrong oh no that's i uh, listen all these names i'm not you know what i'm saying all these is none of these is our names anyway so <laughs> they're not you know we talking history month this yeah. none of these is our names yeah, no. they all been given to us they at the end of the day i don't i don't put a lot of weight on these names because they, they don't belong to us anyway now was mr collins in with you prior i mean uh prior to you um i would say blowing up on no, you listen okay. let me tell you i i haven't even known mr collins that long okay <laughs> it's just I don't know. I don't even know about. Listen, I met him. We met in November of 2023. Okay. And we got married in July. Uh, no, we met November 2022. Uh huh. And we got married in July, um, of 2023. Uh huh. Yeah, is that right? Yeah. So we've been married what six months? Six, seven. Yeah. Yeah. Most time when people get married like that, it's because both of them already got their mind made up of what they want. They tired of games. But you got these people that these are what you call them, these um counterfeits that jump in and you <laughs> ready to get married again, but they're not. And it's like what? And somebody's like, Well, that's why because you got married so early. But if you know what you want, that's what he felt. He felt like, listen, he felt like, listen, I'm fifty three, I know what I want. I don't, you know, there's no need to play games. That's right. I know what I want. I don't want to introduce you as my girlfriend. I want to make this right before God. I want to introduce you as my wife. I, you know, he felt like he didn't want to play games anymore. He already knew what he wanted. He did, you know, it, it is what it is for him. Uh -huh. Now, let me ask you this. Some, okay, just looking at others from, um, just others from the outside looking in, and let's say in the entertainment field, you have like when uh, Bobby Brown and Whitney Houston yeah. got together and it was determined that Whitney Houston was the bigger star, yeah. you know, so to speak. So now Bobby Brown is being looked at as Mr. Houston. Mr. Houston. Does Mr. Collins feel this way about no, your fame? No, Mr. And... Collins is whack. He don't, <laughs> <laughs> he don't even care. Half the time. I remember a lot, like before we got, you know, because people always, I, I told my step, my godmother day, I said, everybody doing comedy or in entertainment, I promise you, they got somebody in their family in their circle telling them that they about to blow up and be the next big thing. Uh -huh. And so people would be like, you know, you got to be careful, you know, you make sure because, you know, you might be the next big star, you know, you might be been ready to be rich and he might just be there for the money Start a prenup. oh yeah and you need to get a prenup and i remember my son so i asked my son um because my oldest son i said so well, what do you think son he said well you ain't got nothing now <laughs> he said, so you don't got nothing he don't have nothing he said so technically you know if you got something y'all would build something together you know he said you know he said you listening to these women who don't even have a man you better go on and marry your husband and, uh -huh. <laughs> and live your life go ahead son <laughs> coach your mama yeah um but if yeah he, he's not he's not starstruck he doesn't you know, he's like, whatever you want to do. If you want to tell jokes, I'm there. If you don't want to tell jokes, I'm there. A lot of times, though, he'd be like, quit letting people take advantage of you. Mm -hmm. he's like, you know, you're too kind hearted. You do everything for everybody for nothing. Uh huh. You know. Does he travel with you when you go some, to work? No. Some, you know what? Sometimes he does. Sometimes he doesn't. He works. So uh -huh. when he can, he will. Like, he's going to go to Atlanta with me this weekend. Uh -huh. um, but a lot of times he doesn't. Um, I, You know, but I'm. I just go. I don't, you know, I got to start doing better. I, I need to put my foot down. Probably my godmother gets on me all the time about traveling by myself. A uh -huh. lot. I'm just a goer. I go. I just. 
Just take your little friend. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do. I take my little take friend. Take your little friend. <laughs> yep. Listen, I take the Lord with me everywhere I go. Jesus yes. is with me. I we're gonna come. we're gonna take some calls now. If you want to call in and say something or ask Miss Slaughter anything, call give us a call at nine one nine eight nine 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 three zero five. That's nine one nine eight nine 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 three zero five. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Don't call, be shy. Ask me anything. I'm 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 transparent. Janine, earlier you mentioned Ty Banks and you gave him a shout out. I want to give him a hand applause too because I've just been following his work. Mm-hmm. And um, he's very good at what he does. Yeah. And, and he also had a show here um, yeah. some time mm-hmm. ago. Um, tell, tell us what it was like him giving you that opportunity to, um, I think you did, was it Liquor House Comedy? You were part of the Liquor House Comedy yeah, series with Dink Kearney and uh-huh. Ty. And shout out to Dink Kearney. What's up, Dink? Hope you're watching or listening today. Um, Liquor House Comedy um, 5, Volume 5. You can catch me there. And um, very, you know, and I was so new. I don't even think I had been doing comedy, like, um, long at all. And, um to go back and watch it now and to see the progression uh-huh. because it was a lot of profane. I'm like, Ooh, I was cussing my tail <laughs> off. Um, but you know, I don't take it for granted because now, you know, it gave me IMDB credit. Mm-hmm. Um, it gave me when I go out and I do clubs and they ask me, okay, do you have any credits? I'm able to say I do have some credits because he gave me that opportunity. Um, I was also um, in um, Hit a Lick 2 mm-hmm. with Dink. Um, I did some cussing in there, but I like that one. You that was, was good. Ooh, I'm I like you. that cussing. I mean, was you was good at it. Listen, I told Dink, I said, listen, you need to have me back. You did well. You're a great yeah. actress. I'm going to tell you that now. <laughs> Margaret has been in a, a film, too. Uh, what? You was in Yes recently, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, right. a Ty yeah. Banks film. That's pretty good too. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. shout out to Ty because um, the thing I like about Ty is that he is a straight shooter. Um, I think sometimes he gets a bad rap. People think you know. Sometimes people think that people have ulterior motives, or you know, what I'm saying that is always a, a, a queer pro quo or hidden agenda. I've never. He's never been that way with me. It's always been just, you know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to help people come up. I'm just, you know what I'm saying? And right. if I can help you and help me at the same time, it's a win-win. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's been nothing but a blessing for me. Like I said, when I went to the New York Comedy Club in Stanford and I was able to, you know, and they said, well, what's your credits? Hey, I was able to say, listen, you can check me out on Amazon Prime, on Tubi. I'm on these platforms. When I go to the improv and they bring me up, that's one of the things they say. You can catch her on Amazon Prime. You can catch her on Tubi. So him giving me those opportunities, you know, hey, it worked for me. And that's I'm, I'm right. thankful. And, and it didn't cost me anything. Yeah. <laughs> that's wonderful. Yeah. Janine, you displayed here that you are a woman that have broken through many challenges yes. in your life. And um, right now, I mean, you well, you've experienced motherhood. You've experienced being a wife, um, career woman. Yeah. Um, typical things that a lot of other women experience. But soon you will be networking or not networking. You will be together with several other women. Yeah. Uh, later right. on this month. And you guys are doing something together collaboratively to help other women. Right. Talk about that, please. So February 17th, it is called Affirming Your Greatness. Um, It is actually something that's been in my spirit to do probably for over 20 years. And again, I talk about that fear. Um, Fear will shut down so much. You know, we got to get beyond that fear. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's something that I finally got the courage to do. You know, I don't know some if you've ever had a vision or something you wanted to do. And you feel that like pushing, mm-hmm. like it, the pushing was like, okay, this thing got to be birthed. Whether I'm ready or not, mm-hmm. God was like, this is the time. So um, I got a venue. Um, I prayed about it and asked God to show me who the women were. And he did. Um, it's going to be February 17th um, at the, I think it's the Lion Park Community Family Recreation Center in Durham. Um, it's just going to be a celebration of sisterhood and women. And um, so many times I feel like with women, we focus on um, we focus on 
what 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 the problem is and not the why you know like right she's promiscuous but we don't focus on well why is she promiscuous or she's so angry and so bitter but why or she's standoffish but why there's there's a reason behind that we focus on the fruit and not the seed mm-hmm. and so i just want to um spend a day with women celebrating women and affirming our greatness and just walking in some of there's some powerful women who have overcome some trauma and they are going to come and bring their stories and testimonies and just um, try to affirm women and push them to their next level. Mm-hmm. You know, I think if we have so many women, so many times we're hating on each other mm-hmm. instead of loving on each other. Mm-hmm. So I got a DJ. We're going to have lunch. We're doing some crafts, some fun activities. We're going to have some comedy. We're going to have some ministry. Just going to be a fun day of sisterhood. So and it's only 20 bucks. So, um, yeah. All right. I am definitely going to try to make that. Yeah. I have a prior engagement that I had said I would attend uh, months ago, and it falls on the same day as that. And and there's another event <laughs> later on that night, too. I'm like, how am I going to do all three? Oh my God, Everyone in different cities, but I definitely wow. wanted to get to yours and the other one that I had uh, committed to okay. as well. So I'm definitely going to try to come to that one. Um, Black Hollywood, Cat Williams, oh God. your fellow comedian. <laughs> recently just broke the internet Ooh, i'm sure Lord. you know about that yeah and uh when you look at it all in a nutshell you know how he just really hammered on those that he felt like may have betrayed betrayed him uh stealing jokes and things of that nature his jokes and all that what do you think do you think what cat has done has been helpful i mean just waking these folks up and saying hey you know, it's time out that we stop doing this, stealing from each other, whatever, whatever. Or do you think it's been hurtful? I think it's been, I think him, I think he has a right to speak his truth. Mm-hmm. But I think when he began to speak other people's Ma'am. truth, then that's when he crawled. That to me, Ma'am. that's when it made him look Ma'am. a little jaded. Okay, like mm-hmm. somebody stole your jokes and you've been saying this for a minute. Certain things happen to you. That's your truth and you have a right to speak your truth but some of the things he spoke didn't have anything to do with him so how was that speaking your truth how was you, like who 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 died and made you the person that to, to, to blow the lid off this stuff when it didn't have anything to do with you mm-hmm. i feel the same way yeah 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 um yeah. that that i didn't understand that part uh-huh um yeah i wasn't ready for it i mean it just <laughs> i don't poor Sh- um shannon sharp you know <laughs> He wasn't ready for it. He didn't know what to do. What to do? Yeah. Bless his heart. And I, I, that's why I said. I mean, you know, he put he just kind of put Shannon in a crossfire. You know, I didn't yeah. think that was fair to him on that show. But like you said, he was able to speak his truth. Um, mm. Go ahead, Margaret. I oh, think you were going to say something. Really didn't. <laughs> oh, you remember on I think it was Why Did I Get Married too when uh, one of those guys was on there that was at the table and something got told uh-huh. and he got up and just told on everybody. everybody it's like seat. what? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. That's what it reminded me of. Yeah, but you gotta remember we live in a time now where people thrive off drama. Uh huh. That's what we you know. Yeah. People thrive off drama. The more drama, the juicier it is, the mm-hmm. what we call it tea, the hotter the tea, the the you know <laughs> that's what we we thrive off of. Yeah. I think it's a, it's a distraction too. It, I mean, somewhat because it's like a whole lot of it. It's like, okay, most stuff you talk about you hear it'll die down, but this is you're gonna be talking about this forever probably. Cause it's, I mean, it was so much. It it was a shock, you know, that the way he put it out there. But um, like I said, he got the right to to tell his truth. But when you tell on somebody else, it's an adult that chose to do whatever they did. My point is, if you're gonna tell who approached you, like if I say me and me and someone else, another comedian, but I don't need to say me and Janine, and I still got my I still got my wig on, but she got a bald head. I ain't had my business telling what you did because you're grown. That why I said they must have really did something to him for him to just go out like that now cat re uh currently has a tour coming yeah. up do you yeah. think he did that for ratings i'm sure that probably played a part in it too probably um, didn't need it probably though. marketing uh-huh I, I, I mean you can always use some, some oh, yeah, marketing. Some, That's some, what some, I yeah, yeah i'm yeah. sure yeah you know what i'm saying you know it helped yeah. yeah, I mean, look at all the views that the interview garnished. So you know that probably people really want to go hear some more, uh-huh. um, because look how many yeah. people tune into the interview. So mm-hmm. they probably like, listen, what else he gonna say? What else you got? There was a debate, um, and I, and I've talked a little bit about this. Deb- I've I've seen somebody else do it on their podcast, but at the same time, I was kind of talking about it too. Um, 
Blue Comedy and versus um, Clean. Clean. Mm-hmm. Um, I mentioned it. It's kind of hard. Oh, I've seen it challenging for comedy com mm, comedians mm-hmm. that do both. Not really be good at one as they are the other, and they tend to bomb when they try to go clean, like in front of an audience that is a clean audience or expecting clean comedy. Right. Speak on that a little bit, Janine. Uh, well, I don't, I mean, for me personally, mm-hmm. um, I've been doing more clean comedy lately and it's been going well for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's maybe all in the material. Um, I'll never forget though. <laughs> I'll never forget one time I, um, Michael Collier told me, he said, God, you are so blue. He said, I mean, like, you are really blue. Um, and I guess that, that I mean, I just, I, I mean, I curse. I like the, I mean, I'm not going to, you know, I like to curse. I mean, I, I think a lot of stuff is funny. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but that's me just being uh, honest and real. Right. Now, somebody told me recently, okay, Janine, you got to clean a lot of the stuff up, though, because for where you're trying to go and where God is taking you, people will look for anything to discredit. Uh-huh. what God is doing in your life. So some of that stuff you got to you got to clean some of that foolishness up. But my personal preference, hey listen, I like to talk <laughs> that way. Uh-huh. Like, yeah, it's funny to me. Um but you are who you are, yeah, right? I am who okay. I am. Um but I think that if you if you're funny, uh-huh. I think you can you you should be able to do both. It's no different than saying that you know, uh, you can't make this crowd laugh or that crowd laugh. It's the same thing, uh, but I think we get comfortable with the profanity. Uh-huh. Uh, I think, like Michael Collier told me, it's the same thing. It's just taking the cussing out. You just you taking the profanity out. If the joke is funny, the joke is funny. Mm-hmm. That little cuss word, if that take it out and if that don't make it funny, then the joke wasn't funny from the jump. Right. I agree. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. I think sometimes the co- the comedian thinks that if they're used to cursing, they think they want to take it out or they're not going to laugh. But if they're, if they're expecting you to curse, then you might bomb whatever. But like you said, if it's funny, it's funny. It's, mm-hmm. the, it's the same thing. I would laugh. But I don't curse, but um, it does make it funnier. Because if you say that, and you're like, oh. You know, it's yeah. like, almost like a, yeah, it makes it funnier. But it's still, if it's funny, with that, it should be funny whether you're cursing or not. Yeah. I, yeah, I see. I don't know. That's just like to me, crowds where it's cussing, them people have more fun. Like, <laughs> <And> fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, they just yeah. have more fun. But clean comedy, it can be funny too, and it can be you know, like the show I'm doing Sunday is clean. Uh-huh. Um, and I I particularly tried to get on that show because there's another opportunity behind that show that if I do well at this show, you know, that can take me to a higher level where you know cussing and stuff can't take me sunday you're going to be in atlanta is yeah. that right mm-hmm. okay where where's your next uh show locally locally um i think it's not until march because march. of the event okay. is um uh the event that's in february so mm-hmm. i kind of took a break march the 16th it's me and grave digger okay oh grave digger yeah yes, shout out to grave digger shout out to grave. hey yeah. all right we are almost at the top of the hour the show is ending we're gonna have to have you back miss Janine. Yeah, yes fun. yes it's, it's fun. always fun whenever i'm around you hey um tell us again where that event is in um the one that you got coming up the other oh, one oh wait no i i told no february 29th uh-huh, good night february. comedy club Lord, oh, okay Jesus. you're gonna be a good night so good nights february 29th yes okay um it is um the day one comedy show. It's myself, H. L. Boney, and Teron Rogers at Good Nights Comedy Club. Okay. Um, February twenty ninth. So that show, um, if anybody, you know, if people are available, come on out and support. Support local comedians. Like I said, this is not an easy job and we need your support. You know, mm-hmm. we need people to come out and, and get their laugh on and support. It's um I remember um, Pierre I never forget Pierre told me he said when you get make it to the top, he said people are gonna call and ring your phone off the hook to get tickets. He said, but at this level, you have to practically beg them to buy a ten dollar ticket. Mm-hmm. Guys, we'll be <laughs> back next Thursday. Janine, thank you for coming in. Uh, Margaret, thank you for sitting in with us. Chat City with P. Ross is signing thank off now. Me. Thank you, Janine. We'll see you next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Peace have out. Have a great weekend.